In this video, I'm going to explain how I beat Lexapro in Casio Mario World and what exactly makes it one of the most difficult levels I've ever played. Love in the time of Lexapro is the incredibly challenging water level in Casio Mario World. The gimmick of the level is that you can only swim when touching something that the game considers to be ground. Unlike normal Mario platforming, holding the jump button does not make Mario swim higher, and instead, this is controlled by the directional pad. Holding up will make Mario swim extremely high, and holding down will make Mario do a short hop. The level teaches you this mechanic by placing an unreachable message box at the beginning of the level. The very first obstacle also teaches you to control your height mid-swim, and this is extremely tight. These next few jumps further require a series of controlled height adjustments using the directional pad. If just one bounce is off by a few frames, the entire section will be impossible to clear. These throwing chucks look messy, but they behave exactly the same way each time, and swimming back with the baseballs buys you some time to make the next hop. Timing the next swim perfectly as the chuck's head turns allows me to make the distance and height to reach the great platform. I really struggle to jump to the winged block over these jellyfish. Pressing down in the middle of the jump before the arc would make the jump too short, so the initial number of frames holding up when first swimming was crucial. Make it over this awful jellyfish stack and then somehow time the next few jumps in a way that avoids the torpedo teds and you're set. The disco shell must make it across the gap, but this only happens if Mario is well ahead to the right side of it. Next, we just swim to the right and pray the shell doesn't despawn so that we can get the checkpoint. And of course, save at least 500 times before some random act of God knocks the power from my console. The second half isn't much easier. The one swim gimmick still exists, but most of the time this is now spent item swimming. I personally don't mind item swimming, but most players absolutely hate it. With careful control, we can place the spring on top of the jellyfish, but we have to go around to get above it. Go too slow and the fish will catch up. Not hitting these munches just takes the right trajectory. The trick to the bean jump is to actually not stand on the tip of the bean as this will give you less distance causing you to not make it to the Koopa. Remember, we can only swim once without an item in our hands. The red and black urchin here is invincible, forcing us to swim in this tiny space. This was one of the toughest sections of the entire level and took many attempts to get used to, and that's after successfully making it back here through all of the other sections. There are multiple ways to get the shell to the other side. Kicking the shell through this gap is what is expected of the player, but time it during the wrong part of Mario's swim and you'll fall too quickly and die. Don't get murdered by the shell and you're good. Removing this urchin requires a very precise up throw during a particular part of Mario's up swim. Here, I have to perform an underwater shell jump so that I can get through this gap. The way that worked for me was timing the shell kick right before Mario bonked his head on the ceiling. Also, if you don't hold the up button when you land on the shell, this happens. It might seem fairly straightforward, but actually figuring this timing out was a real challenge. And there you have it. This level took me about eight hours to clear from start to finish and is one of my most rewarding experiences in Kaizo Mario. This is a new format of video I've been wanting to make for a while, so please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these. And of course, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because it really gets my videos out there. Thank you for watching.